one of the great things about vidIQ is when I'm drawing a blank for uh, for a video idea, I can always go there and get topic suggestions because some of the, the the way in which I live is second nature to me. I don't really think that you know people don't know these things, and I, I kind of forget that. So, what I'm going to be talking about today is the five life lessons that I have learned. Uh, being out here on the road, on the streets, being a hobo, being a traveler, you know, uh, being a nomad, whatever it is that you want to call me, um, you know, these are the five life lessons. I think they are the, the five most important lessons that I have learned. And the first one, and this is probably, I think, the most important one, uh, is if it's not yours, don't touch it. That's it. That means dogs, uh, that means gear, that means campsite. Whatever it is, if it's not yours, don't touch it. And one of the big reasons why this is important is because, you know, out here, if somebody comes up uh, missing stuff, especially if you go by their camp or whatever, all of a sudden they start throwing accusations. And the thing is, is I don't really get those accusations against me uh, when people think, oh, who stole my stuff? They're not looking at Friar Tuck. They're looking at other people. Why? Because they know if it's not mine, I don't touch it. When you're around people, their dog will come up to you. It's not yours. Don't touch it. If they say, yeah, it's okay, it's fine, whatever, or they don't call their dog away from you, well, then, you know, it, it may be okay. But the thing is, is if it's not yours, don't touch it. Uh, this will keep you from getting accusations uh, of, of stealing, which is probably the, the worst thing that you could be accused of out here because it will create hostilities. Not only will people look at you, but then you'll be the first person they come to. You know, and another thing is, is people offer me a lot of gear and I'm like, nah, I don't need it. I got my own stuff. And I keep getting offered more and more stuff and I'm like, nah, I don't need it. Uh, I got my own gear. I got my own setup the way that I want it. And that, again goes back to if it's not yours don't touch it because um you don't you don't want what other people have i mean sometimes people give you something it's like oh cool but unless you're trading for it you you just leave it alone uh for the main reason is you don't want to be accused of stealing one of the newer lessons which is number two that i have learned is the art of the tarp so uh those of you that you have been watching this channel over the last couple of days. You've been warning me about the tornado warnings that have been coming through, and uh, and that I was, you know, had some severe weather. Well, you know, this is why it's important to learn the art of the tarp. And even in some of my videos and my live streams, I take you guys through and I show you kind of how I set up my tarp, you know, what the methodology is behind it, and things like that. The art of the tarp is the most important thing because last night. Uh, actually, it was probably about early this morning. The, the rain uh, and everything was supposed to hit us at about 4 o'clock. It didn't hit till about 6 o'clock this morning. And, you know, my it was so heavy that there's not a drip string in the world that would have protected my hammock. So I had to tear down my hammock real quick. But I got a dry spot. I, I set my gear up in the, in the little dry stop spot in the center. And, you know, I g went back to sleep and got the rest of sleep. Let the rainstorm go. Okay, but the art of the tarp is probably... Uh, it's definitely the second most important thing that you learn uh, because you know it will keep you dry uh, if you're if you're home bumming it or if you're not really getting the the you know hiker gear you know the stuff that's really thin and actually uh, dries really quick you want to make sure that you're not getting wet now being down here in the south during rainy season during spring uh, it is a, a little bit different it's it's warmer so like last night the low was like 60 65. Uh, and so like am I gonna get sick from that? No, not necessarily uh, But the thing is is you want to make sure that you uh, that you're not getting wet and that you can actually dry out Especially if it's raining during the day so that you can you could dry out before you go to bed uh, You know and staying dry is probably one of the most important things uh, That I have learned out here and you know the thing is, is I've always hated the rain I, I I've always figured out ways to get out of the rain find a find a cover or whatever, but uh, you, as of lately, because of how much I hate the rain, I've been getting nothing but inundated with rain. In the same way, I hated road walks until I, until I did the Alabama road walk. Now I like road walks; they're not bad at all. You know, it's one of those things where you kind of learn how to, uh, how to adapt to it. Okay, number three, I think it's important um, as a life lesson, and the reason why uh, you know pack in, pack out is important. Is because you may be jumping in, especially if you're doing a lot of stealth camping, 
<clears throat> because you're traveling, you're doing road walks, you're, you know, you're, um, you know, hopping trains, whatever it is that you're doing to travel, uh, you are going through areas and you don't want to really leave a trace that you were there because what you're doing is you're blowing up the spot for the next person. Not only that, you know, you're, you're making yourself look like a slob. One of the things that has, it's kind of starting to break me down. And I think that maybe a lot of other, uh, bums go through the same thing which is, you know, you, you clean up your area, you keep it a, a, a clean area, but then you go to a new campsite and the previous person trashed it, okay? And it's like, why am I picking up after myself if, uh, if these people aren't picking up after yourself? And, and it really has to do not only with a point of pride, but within the homeless community, you are looked at, like, if you keep your campsite clean and neat and tidy, you know, you carry your trash out and stuff like that, they will, you will be uh, respected and treated a little bit differently within the homeless community because they, they know you're not a slob, okay? And as, as odd as this may sound, you know, this is, this is something more about the, the uh, content of character or the way that you're perceived or the image that you have within the community than anything else because the thing is, is you want to be looked at within the community as somebody who you know, you may be out here, but you at least got your, got some of your crap together you, and you got to do certain things. Okay. But after a while though, it will become harder, especially if you're home bumming it, <clears throat> it will become harder to, to rummage up the will to be able to do it. But here's, uh, you still do it because it, it's, it's about you, not them. Okay. You, yeah, these people left a mess. Am I going to clean it up? If I was going to be here for a long period of time, yeah, I would I would definitely clean up this campsite because I don't want to look like a slob. And if housies ever come by here, they're going to see, oh, well, yeah, this campsite, it's neat, it's tidy, you know, so on and so forth. Okay, so, you know, pack in, pack out, taking your trash with you uh, is a very, very important, especially if you're going to live life on the road. Number four is, uh, I call it friends, not family, or friends versus family, but... It, and it really has to do with a comment that I received because, uh, a couple of days ago. It's like, oh, okay, well, I didn't really think that people uh, didn't know the, the difference. Okay, so out here, uh, every if you talk with somebody a few times, you call them a friend, okay? Uh, in the house world, you'd probably call them an acquaintance. But out here, oh, yeah, it's my friend. I know him. I, I know, you know, what his issue is. We've sat back, you know, around a campfire, smoked a bowl, drank a beer, whatever it is that, that you've done with that person. You, you have some sort of communication because you know the the truth is is being out here you're you have to get used to being solo you know by yourself you know keeping to yourself because most out here we're we're anti-social we don't really uh, uh do a lot of interactions those that we can get along with we'll do the interactions with but those that you really get along with those people that you know that have your back um you know kind of like how me and Puckett were uh you know, Puckett and I, he's family. Okay. He's not a friend. He's family. Okay. And you know, even rail riders, if, if one rail rider meets another rail rider, they'll automatically consider him family because they have a lot more in common and they can, they can coexist together. Now train riders, I was warned about this from Slack and Fishbone that, you know, train riders have their own issues. So you just kind of keep to yourself and sometimes you can get along with them, but they're still family. But in the in the in the home bum world, in the urban camping world, you know, family is those people that have your back. Okay, so when when pa- when Puckett went into like it was something like a diabetic coma, his blood sugar went out of, went out of whack. Plus, he also had pneumonia. This was last year during the uh, during the twenty degree uh, temperatures when when Florida got its coldest winter uh, in years. Well, he fell out. A friend would be like, oh, man, I hope he's doing okay. Uh, family's going to pick you up and carry you somewhere to get you medical attention and get you medical help. That's having somebody's back, okay? And you, I consider I consider Slack and Fishbone family, not because of rail riding, but because they had my back and I had their back. When we traveled together, you know, it was Slack uh, or Fish, yeah, no, Slack would would do his thing and he would contribute and I have my resources that I would contribute. Fishbone had his things and he would contribute. And because all three of us worked together, we, um, we were able to have a more 
uh, uh, not simply a, a, a better existence, I guess you could say. We it was it was not as bad as it could be because we were all pulling together, we were all working together, and you know it, it is what it is, okay. But you know there's a big difference out here if somebody says my friend versus you know hey do you know this guy? Yeah, he's family. If if somebody comes up and says says something like that, that means okay, well if you trust this guy, then you should trust that guy because that is a way of vouching for somebody. When you call somebody family, you're vouching for them. They are, they are somebody that because they have your back and you have their back, that that you're gonna go toe to toe, side by side with these with these people. Okay, so you know, friends versus family is much different in out here than it is on the inside. Okay, so I've done a hobo tutorial on this, and some people don't really fully understand uh, what exactly I'm talking about, but it is. The art of adapting. You got to be adaptable. Okay. So, for example, for for instance, I'm walking up to Burger King. I meet another train rider. Him and I talk, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm hopping a train out of here, and, and so on and so forth. So I'm like, hey, I'd love to hop with you. I'm still green behind the ears. I wanna, I, I still, I, I kind of need my training wheel still uh, until I feel comfortable enough to navigate myself, just because of you know how long I've been doing it. I've only hopped four trains in my life right now. Okay, I'm hoping to hop more, but right now I've only done four. I don't feel experienced enough. But the thing is, is as soon as I ran into him, it's like, okay, cool. And he's like, you you got to keep up, okay? And I'm like, huh, me keep up, dude? You're the one that has to keep up with me, you know? Because but he was also carrying a lot more weight, a lot more stuff than I was, and you know, he, he had some other issues, which made him a little bit slower. But you know, you when when somebody when you start traveling with somebody or something like that you got to be able to adapt to be able to fall in lockstep because if you're traveling with somebody once the there's going to be somebody that is leading the group and then there's going to be the rest that are going to follow okay and since unless you're the one with the most knowledge and the most experience you're a follower okay and so that means you need to adapt when they say when they say okay we're going here we're going to do this da, 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 you are looking for ways to be able to one you're not complaining okay so what you got to walk 20 miles today and they're going to walk 20 miles and you're just going to deal with it don't complain okay um uh, just go with the flow uh if you you know a, another example is uh at first we were i was going to try and hop out of mobile but there was there was too much heat there so we decided to go to new orleans you know we we whatever the situation calls for You've got to be able to to move along with it. You can't let you and, and your personal hangups or your uh, your shortcomings uh, be an obstacle, especially out here. You just got to power through it. You got to adapt to it. Figure out how to be able to um, how to be able to, to exist and, and uh, just go with the flow. Okay, so for example. I hate the rain. I'm usually hanging in doorways, but I got Sam. We need to be out in the woods. Okay, so now I've had to really get good at the art of the tarp. Okay, and so I'm adapting to it because it's raining and it's constantly raining and it just won't stop raining. Well, I hate the rain. Okay, it's not like I. It's not like I can go. Oh yeah, let me go put myself in a hotel room. I mean, unless one of you guys want to do that in my tip jar, I mean, it'd be much appreciated. But either way, um, you know dealing with the rain i've had to adapt to it and in, when you learn to adapt to things the things that you didn't like at first you actually start to at least be okay with if not appreciate uh that whatever it is that that you're doing so being adaptable to whatever situation is important and i think the biggest uh the the, the first place that i learned this was marine corps boot camp because it, the motto is adapt improvise and overcome <coughs> and so Taking that theology out here or that ideology out here has been a huge benefit for me uh, because I don't ever have, when people say keep up, it's like, I'm not the one that has to worry to keep up. When people say, well, can you do this? It's like, I can figure it out. Okay. You can't, you can't like the things that you don't know or the things that, that are, that, that you don't like, you cannot let those be your hangups or your deterrents. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, so for those of you that are subscribers and you've made it this far, thank you very much. Um, I want to give you a quick little update on the channel because I, I stated that I'm going to be moving away from YouTube. And I've had some people kind of uh, help me figure 
or not really helped me figure it out, but they've kind of said, nah, you don't need to do that. Just do it. Just be short, be simple. Uh, you know, don't do anything that will, you know, get you, uh, get you, you know, kicked off of YouTube. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But I still want to start pushing, uh, pushing away from this platform. I am still going to be doing videos over here, regular videos. So if you're a member over here, um, and, and you know, which is three dollars a month, you still get to see videos. But there's not going to be as many videos. I'm going to start working on putting most uh, a, a good portion of my content over there, even for free, um, so that people can uh, can. Uh, you know, come and, and, you know, at least be part of the Patreon community. Okay. But I really, my, my biggest goal, um, for moving forward is to grow my website and, um, I'm, I'm going to be buying the domain name. My expectation is to buy the domain name, uh, this, uh, when I get paid next week. And that way I can just put my, my name there or put my, my, uh, my website there. And I'm going to start, I'm figuring out how to be able to write articles mobily. Now that I got a new phone that isn't cracked uh, and I'm having issues with certain keys on the keyboard, uh, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to be able to write articles. And so and what that's going to be doing is I'm going to be using that as a way to market over on Patreon. And my free videos that I put over on Patreon are going to be the videos in which I put um, are, are going to be the, yeah, the videos that I put on my website. Um, and I'm going to use that as a way to be able to kind of grow the Patreon side. So if you, if you are not a member of Patreon, uh, starting next week, I am looking at, uh, putting, uh, putting out videos that are free to non-paid members. So you don't have to worry about paying if you, if you either one can't afford it or two, just, uh, you, you're, you're not to that point. Uh, where you feel comfortable enough to become a paid member, uh, you know that's that's uh, it's perfectly fine. This will just be another avenue. If you're a mobile user like me, you can download the Patreon app. You just go over there, subscribe, do the free membership, and you'll be able to get access to that. And plus, when I because this is going to be the last week that I do uh, live streams on. Well, no, I'll, I'll probably I'll probably do the live stream. Uh, uh, on Patreon, and then I will I will uh, make it visible for uh, those that want to watch it uh, on YouTube. But uh, that's only going to happen for maybe a month or two while everybody gets used to it, transitions and stuff like that. Because you know it, it's in a lot of ways getting people to to move from one thing to another or to, to to make changes. It's like trying to turn an aircraft carrier on a dime. It's just it's you know you just got to do slow uh, as you go. So. This is my goal moving forward because I just don't want to, I don't want to be worried about uh, YouTube uh, taking the opportunity to, uh, to to push me off their platform and, you know, and I get dependent on the, on the income and then I, I have nothing because that will, I mean, I've, I've lost one business. I don't want to lose another one. It's hard enough uh, starting it up, you know, but it is what it is. So anyways, guys. Uh, come on over to Patreon, become a free subscriber. If you are not a subscriber uh, over here or over there, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, everything else is down in the, in the description. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.